Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about the Flutterflow Linux unofficial app uh, that I have actually created. Uh, guess what? Uh, Flutterflow actually had have already released a Mac OS and Windows version of their apps uh, in uh, for Flutterflow. Uh, but when I ask them, uh, we, are you planning to actually release a, um, a Linux version? And I said, probably not, because they're not like a lot of users who are actually using Linux. But guess who is actually using Linux? It's me. <laughs> you probably guessed it right. Uh, and if you are also a Linux user, uh, congratulations for you. If you're not a Linux users, I, a user, I think uh, it, this video still be helpful because you actually learn like generally uh, techniques of how to use uh, the local RAM because uh, the only reason I did this uh, for the full Linux uh, unofficial app, uh, it's uh, to actually run, uh, to use the local RAM uh, or like the version of the local RAM, of course. Um, and then uh, before I just uh, before we jump into this today video, I just want to say thank you very much for all the people who are actually a paid members to the uh, to the YouTube channel. Uh, thank you very much. And also, uh, if you haven't joined my Discord channel, uh, the link is in the description below. Uh, and I am trying to actually do a weekly live session on my Discord for my. This is actually uh, for my five thousand. Uh, subscribers uh, go. Uh, so please, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so we can reach uh, this goal. Uh, and yeah, without uh, further ado, let's jump into this today video and let me show you uh, how you can use the Flutterflow Linux unofficial app that I built. Let me show you how it works first. So now I have launched uh, the app in my phone, this is a physical device. Actually, I don't know if you can see it on the bottom left. I'm on the bottom left, if you haven't seen me. Uh, so this is the app actually, uh, like I said, on a physical device uh, and it's currently running. Uh, and I actually uh, have the screen so you can see it better without uh, looking at the actual app on the screen, on the, sorry, on the webcam. So for example, if I say my lovely app, uh, my lovely app two, let's say just something i just put something here and here so i can just make some change uh, and then uh, what i want to do after that is actually run uh, uh, just reload uh, the run mode uh, so uh, sorry the uh, local uh, local run and then if i uh, just run it again and then hot reload the app you can actually see it with only two clicks I'm able uh, to, or two actions actually, with two actions, I'm able to actually see my app on my phone. Um, and uh, this is how it works. It's super simple. It's super easy. So if, for example, if I write uh, 20 here, let's actually jump, uh, let's actually uh, do it again and just uh, click here and just taking one second or two seconds and then just reload one second or two seconds, you can actually see the new value over here. So now, uh, let me actually show you how you can set it up and how you can use it. Uh, so let me actually first clear uh, the console. Uh, and again, I'm sharing my whole screen because uh, I will just use the terminal and I will show my screen so you can actually see everything together. Um, and uh, the link is in my description below. I'm talking about my GitHub repo. So if you haven't started my GitHub repo, please do. It makes uh, a lot of sense to actually start it. At, uh, it and it's such, such a small thing. Just click on this button to start my GitHub repo. It means a lot, actually. Um, and then uh, you actually have this. Uh, when you visit my GitHub repo, you have this source code, FF source code. So when you, sorry, of course, it's not source code. So when you actually click on Linux app unofficial, uh, this is the folder where the actual app uh, it's uh, being uh, like uh, saved and where you can get it from. Uh, and there's like a short description of the app and what the app is doing. And then this is the setup. So the setup, it's relevantly super uh, simple to set up. Uh, the, the only 
two things that you need. It's actually to download first, you need to download uh, the Flutterflow uh, CLI uh, on pub uh, dev, uh, which is this uh, package. Uh, and then when you download it, you make sure uh, that you can actually uh, run it. So you make sure uh, that you can actually write uh, Flutterflow. Uh, and then if you write Flutterflow, uh, and then click on version, uh, it will actually uh, work. So let me actually try to show you what I mean. Uh, in this case, uh, it's actually not uh, showing the version because there is not this flag of the version. Uh, but if you get something like that, that, that means that it's actually working. And that's the first thing that you need. The second thing that you need is actually a connected device. So if you run A, uh, B, D devices, you can actually see your device. I'm currently running my device uh, wirelessly, so without a cable. I'm connected it without a cable, and I made a video about that. It's this one, if you haven't watched it already, how to run and debug your further app wirelessly without USB cable. Uh, so if you haven't watched it, uh, please do uh, if you need any help with that. So when uh, you're done with this setup, uh, then we have to move to installation. So how do you install the app? It's super simple. You just download this file, which is ff-run.sh, uh, 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 sorry. Uh, and it's actually, this is like, uh, uh, this is like a bash commands, it will actually run bash commands, and you can actually uh, open it in your uh, in your uh, favorite editor to just see how it works, or you can just open it over here actually in, uh, in uh, GitHub. And the only thing that you need to change actually, it's uh, to provide uh, your token, and this will be your Flutterflow token, which you can actually get it from your, when you go to your Flutterflow dashboard, and on the bottom left, there's the account, when you click on your account, you can get it from there. This is the token that you need. And you can actually have to place it on two uh, two, uh, two places. Over here is the first place on tw uh, 20 line and in 64 line as well. Uh, so this is an alpha version. This can be optimized, of course, just not putting the token in two different places. Uh, it's probably better to just put it in one place. Uh, but... Um, uh, yeah, this is like an alpha version, so it's version 0.3.2 of the current recording of this video. But yeah, download this file, and when you download this file, uh, you will probably uh, have to see uh, something like ffLinux.sh. Uh, <laughs> Why am I saying sh? Uh, it's uh, it should be on your folder. So just I, I recommend you to uh, create a new folder. Uh, and then put this file inside this new folder. Uh, great. And then make sure you run this command, which is uh, chmod uh, plus x. Uh, and then this will actually allow you to run the file, uh, like to execute the file from your terminal. And then the last step, like I said, is to rename the token. Uh, just uh, replace this uh, token with your uh, existing token. And that's the installation. That's everything you have to do with the installation. And then we move to the last step, which is the actual usage. So first of all, like I said, make sure that you have the flow installed uh, for the usage. And then make sure that you have ADB devices and make sure you have a device over here. So I actually changed my code. Uh, on the first version, on the first version that I did, uh, I actually uh, run it by a single device, but uh, later on, I actually uh, tried with more than one device. So I uh, made some modifications in order to allow people to actually use, uh, like, like uh, specify the specific device you want to use, is what I'm trying to say. And then, the only thing now that you have to do in order to run this app uh, is just run this uh, uh, this uh, operation uh, or this uh, yeah uh, execute this uh, text uh, and just of course for the device ID uh, you have to uh, write your device ID which you can see it over here from the list of devices in my case because I'm running on uh, Wi-Fi 
this is the IP. Uh, I'm actually seeing the local IP of my device, uh, and then you need to put your project uh, your project ID. And how do you get your project ID? Actually, you get it from the URL. I get it from the URL, and this is my project UID. Uh, not UID, sorry, ID. Uh, so make sure that you get it. It's if you are inside a page or somewhere else, you actually see those get uh, variables. Uh, so you don't need them uh, just until the question mark and not including the question mark. So just copy this. This is your uh, app ID. And then finally, uh, you need true or false. And I have explained what is true or false here doing. But essentially, when you first run this app, you need to uh, supply false. Uh, so when I run it, you can actually see it over here. Now I'm running it. Uh, and it just says that FF. CLI is installed, so it's checking if you have installed Photoflow uh, CLI. If you haven't, it will not run. Another thing is that it's checking is that if the device is actually connected to your phone, if it's not connected again, it will fail and that will continue. And then we have here attempting to ex uh, export code uh, with Photoflow CLI, and it actually uh, was successful. And then we have uh, the bug for directories found uh, uh, found by found and then we have current directory after moving to uh, ff app so it's actually creating automatically uh, a folder inside uh, this folder that you have this file uh, ff run in my co in my case it's called ff linux but uh, i name it ff run uh, and then uh, you uh, then it's creating this app uh, sorry it's creating this folder uh, and then it's actually automatically uh, go inside this folder and it's creating a new folder automatically or just using the current folder if it's already using, if it's already like, if you already have this folder created. And then you have the uh, changing territory to this folder and then it says, which is the current folder. And then it's actually running your app. So in order to see your app, I do is I use uh, this screen uh, copy, um, which is uh, an app uh, you can download for your Linux. Uh, and then this is my phone. And if I start my phone, you can actually see the app installed. And that is how you're running it. And you need to, I'm actually opening a new tab here in my terminal with Control Shift and T that will open a new tab in my term, uh, terminal. And in order to update something, so if I go back over here and just delete 20, and now uh, I actually uh, make it to, instead of uh, false, just uh, write true over here. That will actually say that it's already running. So this app is, this uh, for Linux is already running. So it will only download the code. So I just uh, press on enter here and just wait a little bit. And now I can just refresh it. Like it, like it, I can just press air and it will hot reload it, and you can actually see that this uh, app is now uh, like updated. So that was everything actually that I wanted to show you. It's a very short video, but I just wanted to show you uh, what was my achievement. So this is the first version, maybe of the time of beating that you're watching this video, maybe there are uh, other versions and uh, more capable one. Uh, and uh, of course, I will make sure that the, this description here and the usage and the setup and the installation is actually up to date. So for the up to date information, please make sure you go to the GitHub uh, repo, but technically, basically, this is how it will actually work. Uh, and uh, uh, before I actually close this video, this tutorial, I just want to say again, thank you very much for all the people who actually have subscribed or uh, are member to my channel or pay members to my channel. Thank you very much for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Uh, my goal is 5,000 subscriptions uh, so I can start doing. Uh, um, uh, sorry, a weekly uh, Q&A uh, on my Discord channel. So again, thank you, very much for, thank you very much for watching and I see you in the next tutorial. Take care.